All right, Shalom. I want to begin this lesson by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, Waha Raka Kodash, which in the ancient Hebrew tongue would be the correct names of the Heavenly Father, His beloved Son, and the Holy Spirit. I also would like to give double honors to my teachers, the head apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much due honors and respect to the sincere brethren out there that's also laboring in his work. And as always, I want to say Shalom. To the believers, you know, the Akim as well as the Akwath, which will be you brothers along with the sisters that subscribe to this truth as well. So, yeah, just wanted to go into another quick lesson, you know, pretty much continuing in the spirit and theme of prophecy, which obviously that will be the time we will be in. You know, the time where the things written and foretold in the Holy Scriptures to come to pass in the latter days are upon us and is now being made manifest to the saints, which will be you believers out there, you know. But for all of you unbelievers, the masses of you people out there, which, by the way, when you go into that word mass, it literally means death, <laughs> you know? So for those amongst you out there who are numbered to the sword, those of you who are destined to receive the judgment of our Lord, Yahweh, where these prophecies which we cleave to and believe in is going to come upon you unawares, <laughs> see? And you're not going to know from whence it came. Pretty much, you're going to be snared in an evil time. And like we often mention, you know, and which is noteworthy, the time of Noah, man, you know, the people, they didn't hearken to, to the teaching of Noah, which the overtone of it was to warn, you know, the people at that time of the impending danger. And just like now, the people hearken not until the floods came and swept them away. Matter of fact, let's start off with that. Real quick, right here in the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, and starting at the 37th verse, it says, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Yeah, and there's actually parallels between those two worlds. There are similarities. And how is that? Well, in the time of Noah, the Lord brought judgment on a global scale in the form of the flood. Well, guess what? The Lord is going to bring judgment once again on a global scale, but this time in the form of fire, that unquenchable fire that's set, you know, in an effort to overthrow the wicked, the so-called white man. See that? Again, but as in the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. See, so there are similarities there. And this is why our Lord Yahweh Shah is making this comparison. See, verse 38, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Meaning what? They was oblivious to the impending danger that was on the horizon. All right. They didn't develop the instincts, you know, that comes along with taking heed. All right. The, they, they didn't have the awareness to know what season they was in, man. That they was actually in the season of the Lord's judgment. And that's the same today. <laughs> See? And just like Noah's ministry, which the overtone of it was to warn the people, that's what you have today with the sincere men primarily here at Great Millstone. These teachings is all an effort to warn you, you know, of that danger that's on the horizon. Matter of fact, let me grab some real quick before we continue. This is the book of uh, Jeremiah, the sixth chapter, in the 10th verse. It says, to whom shall I speak and give warning? See, to whom shall I speak? and give warning that they may hear. See that? A hey, and that word here symbolizes understanding. That's why our Lord Yahweh will often use the phrase to those who have ears to hear, let them hear. Meaning those of you out there who have understanding, you possess the spirit to understand, you know, this doctrine, this gospel when presented in its purest form. Again, to whom shall I speak and give warning? See, so you see what the overtone of the Lord's uh, ministry is to warn you, man. See? It says, and give warning that they may hear. Behold, their ear is uncircumcised and they cannot hearken. Yeah, that's concerning the masses of you people, starting with the two thirds of the nation of Israel, man. You resist the spirit of the Lord. You know? You're not willing to yield to the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shine. Guess what? There's a penalty behind that. And just like in the days of Noah, <laughs> for those who, who didn't hearken, to that warning, that was a penalty, man. They all were swept away. They all fell. Uh, they succumbed to that flood, man. <laughs> See? 
It says, Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. Yeah, you don't want to hear the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. You rather hear smooth things. You see? That's why you have our people out there voting, you know, pretty much putting their trust in the oppressor. Well, guess what? When the Lord sent forth his judgment, you're not going to have any cloak for your sin, man. See, when you reject this word, pretty much you're you're rejecting that hedge of protection that can only come from your how about how it's up. See? So when you go back here again to the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, and again, the 38th verse, it says, For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Again, they was oblivious, you know, of what time they was in, what season they was in. They didn't understand they was in the season of, of the judgment of Yahweh Bashim and Yahweh Shah. And that uh, rings true to this very day, verse 39. And knew not, see, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And the key words right here would be, knew not. <laughs> see, proving that the very essence of, of salvation is centered around learning, man, understanding. Knowing, see, versus those who are destined to, to receive judgment at the hand of our Lord, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah. Those amongst you out there who are numbered to the sword. What's going to be the very catalyst, you know, of that judgment, man, coming upon you? The fact that you knew not, see, and knew not, see, until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the son of man be. Matter of fact, let's uh, click on this word knew real quick. The scriptures say, and they knew not <laughs> until the flood came. Strong's G, 1097. Gnosko. Gnosko. Yeah, and that'll be the pronunciation in the Greek for that word knew. Again, the scriptures say, and they knew not <laughs> until the flood came. It says to learn, to know. See that? Come to know. Yeah, for our people, they never had the ability to come to know the true will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. All right, and his purpose, man. You're totally oblivious. you completely in the dark. You know, you have no instincts, if you will, concerning the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, man. And that's actually going to cost you your life. Again, it says to learn to know, come to know, get a knowledge of, perceive, feel. To become known, to know, understand, perceive, have knowledge of. And all of these are qualities, man. These are attributes. You know, to know anything across the board brings a certain level of comfort. And furthermore, it's all an effort to preserve you. You know, there's a term usually used within the sports world, you know, and in particular football, recognize and react. You know, meaning you recognize the play and you react to it, man. All right. In order for you to react to anything, you have to first recognize it. You know, for an example, if a car is driving out of control, swerving and barreling your way, well, in order for you to react to it, you have to first recognize it, man. See, and this is the luxury you brothers and sisters have. All of you individuals who was called into this marvelous light, man. The Lord gave you insight. You know, he gave you the spirit of anticipation, you know? And in that event, we able to foresee, you know, that danger that's coming, embrace ourselves. See that for the impact, which brings me to the book of Luke, the 21st chapter and starting at the 25th verse, it says, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. Yeah, and that's what we're witnessing right now. Case in point, these different phases of the moon, these different moon cycles, you know, we have had these various blood moons. We just had this blue moon. Well, it all goes back to biblical prophecy, man. And that's what we read right here. Again, it says, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth. See, and upon the earth. So not only are these signs and wonders going to be on display in the heavens, but also upon the earth. The mere fact you have these people anticipating Anarchy, man, uprisings, seditions, insurrections, you know, civil unrest. But that's a form of the signs 
that's going to also be upon the earth. See, it says, and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity. Yeah, to be perplexed pretty much means to be stumped, to be confounded. If people out there, you don't have a clue what's going on. You're not going to have the answers, especially going forward when things are to intensify, man. See, it says distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Yeah, the sea and the waves are a metaphor for the people. And that's what you're witnessing, man. Which again, is only going to intensify. The people are roaring, you know. You have this resistance. You know, you have a lot of protests, riots. See that? Verse 26, men's hearts fell in them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. Yeah, get ready for that overwhelming presence of fear to overtake you, man. You know? You people are going to be frozen with fear out there as this process uh, progress. And we're talking about prophecy, man. Okay, the judgment that the Lord has prepared, you know, in the form of these plagues that set to befall the planet Earth, that's going to contribute to men's hearts failing them. <laughs> Again, men's hearts failing them for fear, see that, and for looking after those things which are coming on the Earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And that's pretty much the apex, if you will. That's the climax to life and existence itself, the return of our Lord, Yahweh Shah. See? Verse 28, and when these things begin to come to pass, what things? The prophecies. See? Then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draw of not. Yeah, and this redemption right here is pretty much concerning Yahweh Shah. Each day the sun rises and sunset, it draws closer. It marks another day closer to the return of our Lord and our redemption. See, verse 29, and he spake to them a parable, behold the fig tree and all the trees. Now, why is the Lord, you know, uh, comparing, you know, the prophecy which he about to go into to fig trees and trees? Well, it's all concerning seasons. Okay, see, when you have a fear for prophecy, then pretty much you know what season you in again. And he spake to them a parable. Behold, the fig tree and all the trees, when they now shoot forth, ye see and know. See, ye see and know, <laughs> meaning you are aware. See that? Ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now not at hand. Again, the Lord is speaking pretty much he's prophesying but he's framing it you know in, in the uh form of seasons changing so again you know for those amongst you who are in the know pretty much you know what season you in see that verse 31 so likewise ye when ye see these things come to pass again the prophecies know ye that the kingdom of the most high is not at hand verily i say unto you this generation shall not pass away to all be fulfilled, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Meaning these prophecies stand the test of time. All right? In no wise will you omit, you know, or uh, somehow uh, offset the prophecies spoken here in the scriptures, man. The decree sanctioned by our Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh All right? Again, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Verse 34, and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. Yeah, this is not the time to, to become more acclimated into America, man. You know, you shouldn't be concerned about anything external. Now, we do go about our day-to-day -day business, all right? You know, brothers work. You have to continue to function, you know? But uh, pursuant to the book of St. John, the 17th chapter, our Lord said that he would not take us out of the world, but he would keep us from the evil. See? So you're going to have things you have to handle in your day-to-day, -day, but you're not going to become attached, you know, pretty much mentally, in, in mind, in heart, and spirit. We are to detach from this world, knowing that this place is temporal, man. Knowing the will of your how about Shemeh HaWashah. Matter of fact, let me grab that real quick, and we're going to go back. This is the book of Romans, the 12th chapter in the second verse. It says, and be not conformed to this world, meaning this current system, all right, 
that's being governed by the so-called white man, we are not to be conformed, joined, attached to this world, see? And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, see? By the renewing of your mind. So physically, we are not to catch a flight to another country, <laughs> all right? You know that whole flea doctrine that surfaced, you know, a couple of years back? No, we, we are to, uh, you know, deal with what we have to deal with. But in the mind, in the spirit, we are to transform, come out of this place, see? It says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of your how about some how about So if you uh, truly understand the will of the Heavenly Father, you're not going to be acclimated to this world. It tells you that in the book of First John, the second chapter, man. Those who love the world have not the love of the Father in them, meaning the understanding, the knowledge of your how about some how about is certainly not in you if you love this world. See that? So when you go back here again to the book of Luke, the 21st chapter, in the 34th verse, it says, And take heed to yourselves, least at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting. Yeah, we have to examine ourselves even more now, uh, more than ever, man. Okay? And make sure, you know, our hearts are not overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness, you know? Pretty much to simplify uh, the ways of this world, right? It says, in cares of this life, see? We can't be concerned about what's going on here, man. See that? Hey, when you go into, uh, again, the time of Noah, Noah was obviously not concerned with, with that time. He was busy building the ark, man. See? It says, at least at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that day come upon you unawares. See? <laughs> and so that day come upon you unawares, for as a snare shall it come upon all them that dwell on the face of the earth. And what's the very essence of a snare? What's the reasoning behind, you know, a hunter laying a snare? Well, it's all an effort to catch the prey unaware, man. You know, usually when, when a certain animal, all right, is caught up in a snare, he wasn't aware of it, you know? Because if he was aware, he would have sidestepped, you know, the snare. He would have uh, not gone in the way of the snare. Matter of fact, let me grab some real quick. Come to mind right here in the book of Proverbs. The first chapter in the 17th verse. It says, surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. Let's read this again. It says, surely in vain the net, which the net would be considered a snare, is spread in the sight of any bird. And why is the net, you know, spread in vain? Well, if the bird can see it. If it's in the sight of the bird, you know, which we would be considered the birds, you know, those amongst us believers, well, we have sight, we have foresight. We foresee, you know, the drama that's coming, man. All right? So that snare, that net is spread in vain. See that? Versus those amongst you out there who lack the ability, you know, uh, to see, you know, you're unaware of, of what's to befall the planet Earth. Matter of fact, let me grab that real quick before we go back. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, the ninth chapter, in the twelfth verse. It says, For man also knoweth not, see, for man also knoweth not his time. See that? And what's the key word there again? Knoweth. All right? Our people, they don't know what time and season that they're in. See? For men also know if not his time as the fishes that are taken in a evil net. <laughs> See? And as the birds that are caught in a snare, so are the sons of men snared in an evil time when it falleth suddenly upon them. See? When it falleth suddenly upon them. Which brings me back to the book of Luke real quick. The 21st chapter. And again, the 34th verse, it says, And take heed to yourselves, least at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that day come upon you unawares. Now, when you go into this word unawares, it pretty much captures the very essence of prophecy, the importance of prophecy, you know, 
receiving prophecy, teaching this prophecy, and ultimately believing the prophecies. All right. So real quick, let's click on this word unawares. Yeah, this is the pronunciation in the Greek. Strong's G 160. Hyphnidias. Hyphnidias. All right. It says unexpected. <laughs> See that? Unexpected. Sudden. Unforeseen. Unforeseen. Which you lack the ability to foresee. Which all comes under the banner of prophecy. All right. So for those amongst you outside of the circle, pretty much you are unaware of that danger, the impending danger that's on the horizon and fast approach. So yeah, I just wanted to touch on that. Lord willing, it was edifying. Until the next time I say, Shalom.